All right, next one, uh, Fell Summoner, a six mana, eight, three, with a death rattle. Summon a random demon from your hand. Um, let's see. I, I gave this one a two again. I don't know. I, the summoning demons from your hand, like, maybe if that's a thing. So two in this scale is fringe. Maybe if, like, the big, you know, the big demon kind of decks become a thing it's definitely going to be used in that but outside of that and like really targeting what you're bringing out from your hand i'm not sure if i like it that much i originally had this at a, a two as well but I, I changed it to a one i just i can't see it being a playable card it's really easy to remove and the death rattle i don't think is going to be that relevant because the demons for the most part I don't think are going to be as impactful as you'd expect them. Yeah, I agree. I gave it a one, and I think the biggest reason is the stat line on it. An 8-3, it can just be seal faded. It's so easy to remove. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it have, like seeing play. Yeah, I think it's way too slow, and there's no way to kill it off like you could with the possessed lackey back when you played Q block with Dark Pack. And Void Lord was a much better payoff than most of these demons because it had the huge taunt that spawned more and cubes and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Krakowak rated a 2, Itachi rated a 1, so yeah, none of us are very uh, impressed with this card here. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. We have Priestess of Fury, a 7 mana 6 7 demon. At the end of your turn, deal 6 damage, randomly split among all enemies. Uh, I gave this a four. I think this is actually pretty solid. Even just the sat line, uh, it's going to be good. You know, it does have that demon tag. And being able to do whatever you're going to do during the turn, play this out, and then it's going to deal six between enemies. So what your opponent has on board and or their face, uh, pretty good value. Yeah. <clears throat> this card is pretty insane, I think. It's basically like Ragnaros, but better, because it does six damage randomly split among things, which is much better than just eight to one, because if they don't have any minions, then you put all six face, and if they have a bunch of small things, you can get the damage split between them and clear it off, and if they don't kill this thing when you play it, they're going to be in a world of hurt. Unanswered, this is going to do a lot, I think. I don't think it's overpowered, though. I, I think it's more of a three. It's definitely playable, and you're going to want to play it, but I just don't think that there's going to be a great deck for this to go in after just one set. I think we're going to need a couple sets for this to see a place, find a home. You know, I actually completely agree with that, because it seems overpowered in, like, theory. When you look at it, like, oh, it's a rag that can attack, it's cool... I just don't see a home for it. I don't see a deck for it yet. There's no support. I think you can play this in. I think you can play in like Highlander mid range and probably play this top end in an aggro Demon Hunter deck. I could see Highlander for sure. I think this. I think this is one of the best cards, honestly. Ooh. Is this our first hot take of tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I definitely think it's one of the best. I'll put that to the test on the ladder. I'll try it. Yeah. You know, I want it we'll to be good. It. It's one of those I do. I want it to be good. Yeah. It looks That's like Krakowak and Itachi both agreed, too. Like they both uh, said this is a three, so definitely playable. All right. Okay, here. This next one. Here we go. Kane Sun Fury, a four mana, three five charge. All friendly attacks ignore taunt. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I, this is a four. It's good. Oh, yeah. I don't know who printed this one. <laughs> yeah, so on a scale of, of one to four, I gave this card a five. It's just absurd. <laughs> With all of the taunts that we have, we've never seen anything like this printed in this game before. Especially with stuff with taunt and... All the, all the stuff that Priest plays that can resurrect. And we just go right through it. and it, It's ridiculous. It's definitely game-breaking. Like you said, we've never seen it. 
it has charge, which few min minions have charge now. And I think another thing, I know a lot of people think of it as like kind of a, a mini Leroy or like a way to kill. But it will also be a way like if there's a very valuable minion that you can't get to because of taunts in the way, you'll be able to attack that minion as well, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. I think the also since you're playing Demon Hunter and you're going to be attacking and with all your weapons and stuff like that, plus all your minions, obviously being able to just send your hero's face right into their face plus this plus your minions is just uh, insane yeah because it doesn't say all friendly minions it just says all friendly attacks so yeah that includes your own face which <laughs> um oh geez what is that beast there was does anybody <laughs> y'all know what i'm talking about right that one beast <laughs> that one beast yeah i remember yeah sure. but uh all of your other beasts had charge um oh Tundra. A hunter card. Yes. Rhino? Yes. Tundra Rhino? Yeah. That's what this kind of reminds me of. And that ended up being pretty strong. Like when you built your deck in the way to actually utilize it, uh, you know, especially with like scavenging hyenas and you buff that up and then all of a sudden you're just hitting your opponent for a ton of damage. You know, yeah. Comboing this with like your, like you were saying, you can hit face with all your, and Demon Hunter has so many tools to buff their own damage. So being able to send all of that immediately to face or like Christine pointed out, yeah, like some using it kind of as a tempo, you know, kind of in the mid game or something, not even just to close out the game, but using it to kill off something that's really important that you couldn't normally uh, seems really good. Oh, yeah. And uh... there's so many times people will play something behind a taunt to protect it and it's just game winning for them. And this just eliminates that if you're playing Demon Hunter. Or how many games have you had with Rogue where you're like so close to killing them and they just Titanic lackey on you? <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, yes. Haha, like, -ha, my little lackey. New now you can't kill me. God, uh, you can just send so much damage through with this. It's actually I'm crazy. tilted now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, uh, I will say Krakowak also gave this a 4, and Itachi gave it a 3. So maybe we'll have to get his thoughts on that later. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, Imprisoned Antian, a 5-mana 10-6 demon, dormant for 2 turns. When this awakens, deal 10 damage randomly split among all enemies. Uh, I gave this a 3. I, I think it can be playable but i'm i don't know um the the effect is very powerful and it's very similar to uh that one we just talked about a little bit ago that priestess priestess of fury dormant as a mechanic i'm not very fond of i gave this one a two i think the biggest thing with dormant is it happens after your opponent's turn so they just have a lot of time to plan for it and a lot of interaction. I don't like my opponents to be able to interact with what I'm doing. I'm sorry, I just don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially if you're trying to set it up ahead of time. You know, like you're trying to set this up and yeah, it, it gives them all of that time to just say, well, I'm going to do these other things to counteract what you're doing. And that might make me the bad guy, but I like to play fun in non-interactive decks. That's just... <laughs> yeah, it seems pretty... Oh, I don't know. Having a 10-6 for 5 that does 10 damage is pretty good, but two turns that it's dormant, plus you spend 5 mana to do absolutely nothing. I do like that as like a fast effect when it wakes up right away. There's like another guy that is like rush and stuff like that instead of just being dead on your board another turn. But I think it's gonna kind of be meta dependent. If there's too many aggro decks, you're not playing five mana to do nothing. So we'll have to see. No, the I effect agree. is really cool, but you can't spend your entire turn five playing this, and that's it. I agree with both. Like the turn five thing is so hard. I was so torn between two and three with this. Because if you do have a control, what's like the four mana, like clear the board pretty much? Like if you did that and then did this five drop, but yeah, missing a turn five. And then there's so many good turn like cards that you can play on five still. I don't know. I don't know if there's a deck for it. 
Mm -hmm. I think if you're playing, well, if you're playing against like a control deck, it's obviously completely insane because they don't really do anything. They play reactively and they can't re react or 10 damage that just pops out on them. So you can't even cheat this card out because it's dormant when it when it pops out of your hand. Yeah. I mean, it's there are aren't there a decks. couple cards that like pull demons and all that stuff like either out of your deck or out of your hand. I mean, you could kind of try to combat with that and then you'll get the effect without having to pay for it, but I don't know if there's going to be enough. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, you always have to wait. Back, but you still have to wait two turns. Yeah. 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 Well, um Krakowai gave this a 4. And Itachi gave it a three, so pretty strong scores there. Uh, the next card here, we're going to move on. Spectral Sight, a two-mana spell. Draw a card. Outcast, draw another. Uh, this one, I gave a four. I think this is really strong. Being able to even draw a card when you want, and then potentially drawing two for two mana, um, especially in what seems like it's probably going to be a fairly aggressive uh, deck and you want to be drawing cards, seems pretty good. I gave it a three, but I should have given it a four. It's basically warlock hero power. Don't hurt yourself. Draw two cards. What's better than that? I don't think you can always get it to outcast, though. Like, if you're playing a two mana, draw one card. That's, that's really not great, especially in an aggro deck when you're trying to get on the board and do face damage. I think it's... In a very aggressive deck, if you have a lot of cheap cards and you can manipulate your outcast to the right side of your left hand, right or left side of your hand, then it'll be pretty good for obviously two mana draw two, but I don't know. If you're playing a really aggressive deck, it'll be your only card in hand. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's well, if you're pretty playing much only like playing. one drops, I guess. I mean, it's not that many times playing an aggro deck where your hand's completely empty. I like it. I gave it a three. I think if this this outcast deck comes to fruition, you're just dumping your hand quickly. It's gonna be a really good card, but you don't want to play it on two. Typically, you need to do something a little more tempo oriented. So I only gave it a. Th That's fair, and uh, kind of in line with what the rest of us have already said. Crackwack also gave it a four, and Itachi gave it a four. So it seems like a card that we're all rating pretty highly.